Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, it's another special edition. On location at the Guns and Gear Television Studio, today we're talking new calibers, holsters, guns, lasers, and more. Now, here's Tom. All righty with you. I tell you what, we are having fun today. We're on, of course, the, uh, the Guns and Gear set here. We're shooting the Guns and Gear TV show, and now we're doing radio in the middle of that because we gather a bunch of our friends together, people that actually know stuff about guns. And uh, you could say in this hour we're cleaning up, guys, because we got the Slip 2000 guys, and we're, we're cleaning up. We've got uh, Greg Connor, Steve Tapia from uh, uh, Slip 2000, and we also have Gary Killingsworth from Crimson Trace. And we may talk a little bit about product, but mostly what we're going to do is we're going to talk about shooting and guns and training and fun stuff and I don't care, whatever it is. It, it's all good. Thanks, guys, for joining me. Thanks. Thanks yeah, for having yeah. us. Good right. to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we just finished doing your pieces with Slip 2000, and you kind of, uh, frankly, you shocked me with the, the product, the Carbon Killer that's the most amazing stuff. It's like the green slime that, that it takes everything off. We, t- we had a pan of stuff, and we put, like, cylinders and bolts and bolt carriers in there, and then you just see the carbon just almost, like, bubbling up and coming away from it. It will melt the carbon. It will rise up off the parts, and you will see it uh, floating to the surface. It, it's it, crazy. It uh, doesn't require a lot of scrubbing or brushing with that product. It helps. But uh, I respect you for getting all your guns dirty and bringing them in for me to clean today. That's my specialty. I, <laughs> <laughs> getting them dirty is the fun part, right? Yes. That's the fun part. That's yeah. the fun part. You know, the only thing better than what you make would be if we could just send our guns to you, and then you would clean them and return them to us. Yeah, I've been working on him on that. It won't do it, Gary. Sounds like a good new uh, business idea. Yeah, right it does. There, so. I, like, I like it. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. Well, you uh, know, there was, there was a uh, gunsmith and owned a gun store, and we wanted him to put the product line in and sell it and he didn't want to but he bought a lot of the product from us right and i said why don't you just sell the product he goes i use your lubricant and cleaner and the guys who bring them in they have me clean them so using your lubricant oh. and cleaner it cleans right up i'm making good money with this business no. i don't want to sell your product and give the business away <laughs> he doesn't want yeah. everybody to know how easy it is absolutely yes. now that's funny i like that tricks now, of the trade now, there's an entrepreneur for you right there <laughs> yeah. he says, no i'm not gonna sell you my stuff you pay me to clean your gun so there you go. Well, you know, speaking of that, we ought to just mention that uh, you guys have sample packs people can get. They go to the Slip 2000 website, slip2000.com. But also, anybody that has a gun store can actually get a supply of them because they can give them out to their customers. Any gunsmith, any armor, any store can email us, fill out a simple form if they will, and we will send them sample products of our entire product line. Okay. I mean, I, I got to tell you, that was, um, it was almost, I felt like it was unfair the revolver I gave you, because it's a stainless steel Smith revolver, 357 that may not ever have actually been really cleaned. <laughs> as you probably, it looked like it. You probably figured that out. <laughs> and, I mean, you put it in there and soak that thing and pull the cylinder out, and it was it was shiny like jewelry. It was gorgeous. You know, it was it, something. It, uh, with that lubricant applied, now you go out and shoot it another 500 rounds, and I won't have to come back here to clean it for you. <laughs> you can wipe it clean. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. After you put the lube on it, it actually makes it a lot easier to clean. In uh, our demos, in our developing products, we take, I shoot a three fifty seven Smith & Wesson. Okay. And we go to the range, and with our lubricant on it, we'll shoot up to 500 rounds. And we have to be very careful when we're putting the bullets in. Otherwise, we will rub all the carbon off with our finger, even up to 500 rounds. Really? Yes. Yeah, oh, I've, wow. I've done it. That's crazy. Yeah, then we have to shoot another 500 rounds. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, I heard you were just doing some training. What have you been doing? Yeah. Uh, well, so a couple of weeks ago, uh, another gentleman at Crimson Trace and myself went up to Yakima, Washington um, to do the uh, Magpul Core handgun one Ooh, course. Nice. Um, we didn't necessarily go up to uh, uh, to run it as Crimson Trace guys, per se. Uh, we, just shooters, just as shooters, and right. and uh, so we we ran it with and without laser sights, right? Um, just 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 to see, okay? Because we spend so much time in the range at at CTC, um, just running lasers, right? All the time, just right. just lasers, and uh, frankly, we can. It's possible to develop bad habits when we, when you're doing um, if if you rely just on the laser, yep then you can develop bad habits. And, of course, you guys as a company have always said, look, it's laser and iron sight. It's Absolutely. not either or. 
it's knowing, and the other part is, it's knowing when to use which and when to transition. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what do you find as you're shooting? For, well, first of all, let me ask you, not been there, how's the Magpul course? Fantastic. Yeah? Absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm used to the Gunsight 250 course. I've, so I've run that twice right. and, and was fortunate enough to help develop it uh, with Gunsight. And uh, it's different. It's 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 completely different. Um, so much is is focused on marksmanship. It, ah. it is marksmanship heavy. Okay. Whereas uh, gun sight, and we should tell people, is not marksmanship heavy. It's gun fighting. It's fighting techniques. Exactly. You know, and, and they say, look, the root word of gun fighting is fight. So we teach yep. you how to fight, but we're not teaching you how to shoot little small groups. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, combat accuracy. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and it, it wasn't so much that, that, that one course is, is superior to the other in, in any way. It was just it was just different. It was different. It was uh, it was a lot of shooting, 1,500 rounds in three days. Oh, man, that uh, is a lot of shooting. Each one with a purpose. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, one of the things, one of the main things that I learned was some bad habits that I've picked up doing beta testing um, in, in our range at work, where mm -hmm. a lot of times... Um, it will just be getting rounds down range. I was just gonna say you're just cranking off rounds. You're not really concentrating yeah. and focusing, right? Yeah, and you can you can lose sight and, of of and you know and that could apply to anybody who's out shooting. Sometimes Absolutely. you just go out and say, "Well, I'm just shooting." Well, well, what are you working on? Well, I'm just shooting. Well, yeah. if you're not working on something, you're really wasting this and probably drilling bad habits. Yes. You're you're an old trap skeet shooter, right? Yes, same Absolutely. deal. If you're out there just shooting at targets and not thinking, "What am I working on?" Yeah. You could be actually honing bad habits. Absolutely, and you can you can reinforce the bad habits over and over, and before you know it, that's your habit. Yeah, that that's, that's the way you shoot. That's the way you shoot. All right, hold that thought here. I'll come back. I want to talk a little bit about that, and you know about some of the other things that we learn when we're out training, and the value of having an extra set of eyes watching you and basically the things you can't diagnose for yourself. We're, uh, we're on the Guns and Gear uh, set here, the studio, having a bunch of fun with some of our friends. We'll be right back with more Gun Talk. All righty, back with you, Tom Gresham. It's Gun Talk. If you, uh, of course, want to check us out, go to guntalk.com. Always check out whichever uh, contest, giveaway, not a contest, it's a giveaway we do. Go to guntalk.com slash win, and you can check that one out because there's always something going on around there. We're visiting with some of our friends now. Uh, Greg Connor, Steve Tapia from Slip 2000. Got uh, Gary Killingsworth from Crimson Trace. Just got back from the Magpul course there. I wanted to ask you guys, I mean, in the course of working with Slip 2000, you get to hang around with a lot of interesting people, you know, Marines, SEALs, uh, people who have three-letter designations to the agencies they work for, uh, people who put, I guess, people who put a lot of rounds down range, because you were talking about 1,500 rounds yeah. in three days. How many guns went down in the middle of that? Some? There was there was a few. Yeah. Yeah, there yeah. was a few. It, it is. I mean, it just does. You were, most people don't shoot 1,500 rounds yep. in three days. Yep. Fair enough? Yep. Fair enough. Okay. There was more hands that went down than, than oh, guns. Oh, <laughs> that's the other part. Oh, yeah. If you don't have a, a big old box of bandages, you're not going to make it through the class. Yeah. One of those deals. Yeah. And you find out where every single sharp edge is on your handgun, Absolutely. don't you? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. I mean, and then that's when you people are either taping up the hands, they're doing that, taping the guns, or they're reaching for a file. Yeah. You know, and we're knocking the corners off the of sights, and we're doing whatever we have to do. Absolutely. Yeah. We work with and talk to many of the trainers around the country. Mm -hmm. We deal with an, all the three-letter right. fellas and gals in their academies, and we hear it. We get emails. We get phone calls every day of the week of the classes that were put on, and in the middle of the class... They can always tell the people who haven't maintained or taken care of their weapons well because they are going down in the middle of the class. Yep. And this is time lost for the students there trying to learn something when they're interrupted with a gun going down, sure. jamming, malfunction, whatever happens. And if you're paying for the class, it's it's wasted money. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and this, good classes are not cheap. But good classes are worth every penny, which is kind of that weird deal, right? Absolutely. I mean, whether it's Gunsight or Magpul or Thunder Ranch or wherever yeah. you're going, the SIG Academy, the good classes are eye-opening. And I was the kind of the lead into the break there was the value of having another set of eyes diagnose you. 
would you guys, I mean, because you've all shot and you've all had, you know, shooting coaches and just talk about that. It's, uh, it, it's imperative. It, it's imperative because, especially when there's a lot of rounds going down range, you can lose, you can lose sight of, of basics. Th- things that you might take for granted um, and ultimately it's all basics and it's all exactly <laughs> you know it really is it, it's all basics. It, it really is and uh and as lighting conditions change or distances change or or you're introducing new drills that you may not have ever done before mm-hmm. there's there's certain things that can kind of take you off of your absolutes i mm-hmm. guess and uh that's that's one thing that that's imperative about really good training is that you can introduce new topics and new skills and then still back it off right and right. uh down to the basics i was thinking about a, a friend of mine who's top level trap shooter and i was out with him and i'm not a trap shooter at all top level or any other kind and we were shooting doubles and he said let me try this and he said you take the first target and then swing down and kind of come up it's almost like a u-shape with the gun and come up on this other target and I just started crushing everything. Yeah. It's like, I would not have come up with that on my own. Yeah. These guys that do it every day, they're out there with the competitions. They come up with those ways of doing things. And if we're lucky enough or fortunate enough to be around those fellas or gals, we get to learn these from them. Or we're able to go out and take the lessons. That's it. Uh, it's valuable. It really is. Exactly. We get spoiled. We get in. I get into a routine when I'm going to the range and we're doing our testing. Right. We've got to put 500, 1,000, yeah. 2,000 rounds down range. We need to do this by day's end so that we can come back to the shop and we can clean or do it. Where we your want to only do. real goal is to pull the trigger. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not just wasteful, it's actually detrimental. Yes. I yeah. Mean, I mean, it really is. You go out there and you're shooting Steve and you're just going bang, 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 another mag, bang, 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 another mag. You know, yeah. groups you know, start to open up and. I mean, you don't yeah. care. You don't care. Because that's not why you're there. Yeah. Right? What yeah. kind of shooting do you like to do? Uh, target shooting. I like to go to the range and shoot targets and, uh, and mix it up. Yeah? What kind of targets? What do you do? Uh, <laughs> I like silhouettes, to be honest <laughs> with you. <laughs> it's kind of, a, kind of a safe way to get some practice in. Right. We, uh, we need to get some metal targets at the shop and uh, go out. We go out to different ranges and we'll get some range time just uh, shooting at their metal targets or their silhouettes or whatever they have for us to shoot at. But again, usually for us, we're out there right now the last few years burning up ra- burning up ammo to gather information sure. to develop the product line. Unfortunately, the skeep, trap, and sporting clays, I don't get to do as much right now as I'd like to. Right, because you're probably burning up ARs and semi auto yes. handguns and that kind of thing these yes. days. You mentioned something. I want to talk about the skeet and trap and uh, shotguns. First, first of all, you got a choke, cu- choke tube cleaner. Yes, and it is. It's it's really a repackaged the carbon killer because it's such a good product. Correct. Right. But people wanted to call it a choke tube cleaner. So hey, you provide what they want, right? Well, originally shooting the skeet and trap and having the ported choke tubes, uh-huh. the plastic wad fouling builds up on those uh-huh. ported choke tubes worse than anything. Sure. So we came out with the choke tube cleaner 15 years ago, originally for the skeet, trap, and sporting clay shooter. Okay. An easy way, drop your choke tubes in, let them sit there for 10 or 15 minutes, pull it out, and you can literally push the sheeting or the plastic right out of the choke tube. Okay. Um, The carbon killer came along when the Marines were first deployed to Iraq. They said, Greg, we love choke tube cleaner." But we're not able to deploy with this. So we renamed it, recolored it, and it came out as Carbon Killer. Because yeah, they were actually using it, but they don't actually use choke tubes. Right. So they couldn't requisition it right. and, and do it that way. So they said, you got to call it something else so we can buy it. So we <laughs> renamed it for them and got the NSNs on it, and that's what they deploy with. <laughs> well, uh, one of the things you mentioned was over and under shotguns and side-by-side shotguns, there is an issue with those. If you let them get dry in the hinge part, they can gall. And you can actually really damage a shotgun, can't you? Absolutely. You can devalue those things. Okay. Um, and the old way has always been to put grease on the hinge. Right. Uh, and greases were great, but they tend to attract dust, dirt, sand, and fouling. Once and that gets in there, it actually becomes an abrasive paste. It all of a sudden turns into a little piece of sandpaper working in there. 
right. uh, with our lubricant, uh, which is synthetic, and it will not attract dust, dirt, or sand and collect fouling, mm-hmm. all of a sudden we're giving you the same um, extreme pressure properties that you need there to keep the galling down or keep it away, but yet we're not allowing the dust and dirt and stuff to attract to that product. So basically, use the stuff on your uh, over and unders, your Berettas, whatever you yep. have, to protect them, and, f- and they'll work better, too. Well, they'll work better, and you're going to help maintain the life and the value of that gun a lot longer as well. Interesting point. Uh, just thinking about the fact that we buy guns with an absolute expectation that they will last as long as we do, at least. and But that only happens if you take care of them. And then if you, I mean... I'm kind of firmly against selling guns, but if you ever wanted to sell a gun, then uh, the better you've taken care of it, the more, the better it looks, if, any, if nothing else, the higher the value is going to be. Fair? Yep. Correct. Fair. Okay. Why would you ever want to sell a gun? As I said, I'm firmly against <laughs> that whole concept, okay. but I have heard that people have done that. Okay. So, no, I mean, sometimes the only reason to sell a gun is to get either a better gun or more guns or something like that. But still, I mean, it, really. It's I all mean, about getting more, that's, that's, adding to. That's, that's right. Yeah. You know, it's okay. Yes, honey, I, we do need another safe. That's right. that's the whole thing, yeah. right? No, honey, my son needs this one, and I oh can't give him a galled up one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I need a new one, but my son needs this one, so hand me down. Well, you know, the other thing that's happening now, which is really interesting, is that there's so many women getting into shooting. Oh, yes. You, no oh, more absolutely. is it the whole, you know, honey, I need to do this. She's coming in and saying, I'm getting a new gun. <laughs> Simple as that. There's none of this playing game stuff anymore, that's right? That's right. You know, so and their I'm, decisions are decisive too. They know what they want. <laughs> and when you go to places like Gunsight, you are seeing a lot of women shooters. Now. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. So, you know, with that in mind, and you guys shoot a lot. Any thoughts uh, on the growth of the women's market in terms of how do you invite somebody to go shooting with you? Basically, you uh, ask them. You ask them, yes. There was actually a survey done. NSSF did a survey. They said half the women surveyed said that they would go shooting if someone would ask them to go. Yeah. I mean, how powerful is that? And it works because I did it with my wife, and now we shoot. (laughs) No kidding. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Now, were you married when you started, or did you start her before you got married? No, no, we were married, and she knew I worked with Slip 2000, knew I was in the gun industry and all of that, but never took the initiative upon herself to ever get involved with shooting. Really? Yeah, it came about after the fact. I was going to the range and said, hey, honey, you want to come? You want to shoot? She said, yeah, I'd love to. Well, okay, you, let's go. You, you never asked her I before. never asked her, So, and it, now she, she loves it. She enjoys it. What kind of shooting does she like to do? She likes the same as I do, Target. She likes to shoot 9 millimeter. Okay. Nice. Nice. Okay. So when you're shooting silhouettes, you're shooting not long range silhouettes. No, shoot close range. Okay. So you're shooting handguns. Stuff. Yes. Okay. Uh, pistols. Okay. Because I, I I think in terms also of uh, long range metallic silhouette, you know, which is yes. a whole other game. It's yeah. amazing how many games we come up with, isn't it? <laughs> you know, it? I will tell you, we were sitting here the other day and we had a, a laser target set up there. We're playing with one of these little play, you know, toy trainer deals. And before you know it, we had two guys from the gun industry and they started up close. They're you know, okay, that's fun. Then they move back to here. And they're and before you know it, they're running behind the cameras, behind the lights, <laughs> and they're doing a whole full tactical course. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know, you don't have to do anything. Just provide the stuff, a target, and some guns, and they'll make up a game. Absolutely. So, And it's always fun. It is. Well, you know, we like to tell people we go to these uh, shooting schools, particularly the gunfighting schools, because, of course, it's important in self-defense and all that. Oh, that's true. Sure. But the truth is, this, we go because it's a lot of fun. It absolutely it's is. It's hugely fun, is yep. it not? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, we get we get to uh, play with all these guns and shoot different stuff and pick up tips and learn things and you know, do a little running and gunning. And maybe there's a little Walter Mitty you know, in the middle of all <laughs> that. Sure. I mean, come on. I mean, let's yeah. get real. And lots of toys. And lots of toys. And you get to see what the other guys brought. See what the other kids brought to play with. And day, go right? home and say, honey, I need one of those. <laughs> it, can, it can get expensive. You know, you say, yes, I paid this much for the course, and I bought two more guns as a result of it. <laughs> and the gift shop and the T-shirts. and. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you got all of that stuff. And you're going to get the... You know, the swag you're going to get, you know, you're going to go buy that in the pro shop, do the whole deal. So, yeah, exactly right. And you know, why not? That's what we do. Right. 
Don't go anywhere, guys. We're going to be coming back in just a second here. I'm Tom Gresham. This is Gun Talk. Hey, we're having fun right here on the set. <laughs> <laughs> 